Uh, welcome to this uh, lecture number 16 in which the uh, topics covered are uh, well flow for special conditions uh, followed by partially penetrating wells, uh, it will be followed by horizontal wells and collector wells and lastly the lecture will end with multiple well systems. Uh, now we will start with the first uh, topic of this lecture that is well flow for uh, special conditions. So, in this topic, so the uh, uh, depending upon the three parameters that is uh, upon uh, aquifer comma well and pumping conditions. So, different types of well flows can be organ can be observed. I am sorry, it is can be observed. And uh, again, so this is uh, as uh, we see, so this aquifer well as well as pumping conditions. So, these are the three such a vital parameters, so which may make the things uh, quite uh, intensive and quite complicated. So, therefore, uh, we will not be able to focus uh, very much uh, into these uh, uh, parameters. So, at least, uh, so here, so the, uh, but researchers have obtained solutions for the problems consisting of uh, uh, different aquifer conditions, different well conditions as well as different pumping conditions for the following special uh, situations or circumstances. So, that is uh, solutions have been obtained by various researchers. for the following situations involving any or all of the above three conditions. So, these three conditions mean uh, the aquifer conditions, the well condition as well as the pumping conditions. So, based on this for different situations, so the which are listed here, so the solutions have been obtained by various researchers. So, these uh, different uh, situations are listed here. The first one is the constant well discharge and we already have uh, discussed many of these uh, constant well discharge situation and this is followed by varying stroke cyclic stroke intermittent discharge situations and uh, next we will go to the next situation is uh,
sloping aquifers or sloping aquifer situations followed by variable thickness aquifer situations followed by two layered aquifer situations followed by an isotropic aquifer situations followed by aquifer conditions aquifer situations rather aquifer situations varying with depth so next it is uh, so these are uh, corresponding to the the aquifer conditions then the well that is the large diameter wells large diameter well situations followed by collector well situations followed by wells with uh, multiple section uh, well screens sectioned well screen situations etc so here we should not restrict uh, we should not be under the impression that so these are the only 10 situations uh, which we may encounter after all it's uh, ground water which is uh, the subsurface water and then so the situation uh, may depend upon uh, the various uh, this one uh, it depend upon, it may depend upon the various aquifer conditions or well condition or uh, pumping conditions or combination of any of these three so therefore so these are the uh, the 10 uh, the major situations uh, which the researchers have considered and then obtained solutions so these solutions are uh, uh, fully analytical solutions they are analytical come uh, uh, field or experimental situation uh, solutions or it's fully experimental solutions or uh, combination of others so uh, this is actually uh, this is how well flow for special conditions involving the either aquifer or uh, well or different kind of pumping conditions is uh, handled uh, with this uh, we will go to the next chap next uh, topic of this lecture that is on partially penetrating wells so here we should note that some of the wells do not penetrate for the entire thickness of the aquifer so here uh, such wells are known as partially penetrating wells so 
the wells which do not or rather which are not dug or say drilled till the bottom confining layer of the aquifer are called partially penetrating wells. It is a very simple and straightforward uh, concept. So, in case of this partially penetrating wells, unlike the fully penetrating well, wherein so there is a radially inward flow all along the all around the uh, uh, circumference of the well. So, whereas in case of this partially penetrating wells, the flow is even more uh, uh, slightly I should say slightly uh, more complicated in the sense. So, there is flow not only through the uh, inner surface of the inner cylindrical surface of the well, but also through the bottom that horizontal surface of the well or say the bottom of the well. So, therefore, in this case unlike the fully penetrating wells wherein we assume that the streamlines the flow is uh, radially inward and in the horizontal direction. Of course, there has to be some slope, but for simplicity we do assume that the, uh, the flow is uh, horizontal radially inwards and horizontal. Whereas, in this case so, the uh, especially on the bottom the flow will be in the upward inclined direction whereas, in the in case of the uh, uh, through the sides that is the cylindrical curved uh, this uh, inward surface of the uh, partially penetrating well the flow will be generally uh, or mildly uh, sloping uh, horizontal uh, as well as radially inward flow. And uh, so, the following uh, sketch will uh, represent these three one. So, let us say this is a let us consider for uh, simplicity one uh, water table aquifer. So, sticking to the convention of uh, green for water table. And uh, so, this is uh, water table and then there is this uh, ground level. And in this case, let me show a fully penetrating well as well as a partially penetrating well. So, this is the bottom confining layer. And uh, here in this case, let us say, so this is a fully penetrating well. Of course, uh, say this there will be an opening here obviously and uh, there is also another well which is partially penetrating. 
let us say it just uh, is dug only up to say this much uh, fraction and then be below this even though it is an aquifer so this is a unconfined aquifer and then similarly so this is a here so this is a fully penetrating well in an unconfined aquifer whereas this is partially penetrating well in an unconfined aquifer let me show here uh, with the break line So in this case, now let us uh, see suppose these are the the flow lines into this uh, fully penetrating well which are uh, almost horizontal whereas in case of this partially penetrating well, so of course here also the for the through the cylindrical surface the flow lines are uh, radially inward and almost horizontal whereas through the bottom also there will be some uh, ground water and in this case so this is the both are this uh, discharging uh, wells which is represented by this uh, Q letter Q. So here, so so therefore, we do get the upward flow, or uh, in the uh, uh, inclined direction, inclined upward flow through the bottom of this uh, uh, partially penetrating well. So here, so we can write down. So this is. Uh, uh, Groundwater contribution only through cylindrical side surface. of the well whereas in this case GW stands for ground water ground water contribution through that is a side cylindrical surface and that is the bottom surface of the well so through the side cylindrical surface it will be mostly horizontal radially uh, inward and mostly horizontal flow whereas through the bottom it is an upward inclined flow so therefore so here we can uh, denote this as a uh, 
So, this is in case of an unconfined aquifer. Now, let us also consider a confined aquifer, a partially penetrating well in a confined aquifer. partially penetrating well in a confined aquifer. Of course, it is not much different from partially penetrating well in an unconfined aquifer. Only thing is so in case of confined aquifer, so it is uh, the flow uh, takes place under pressure and uh, Suppose this is the let us say this is the so this is the ground level and then this is the water table and uh, let us also consider say suppose this is the bottom confining layer of the confined aquifer and then say let us say this is the top confining layer. And uh, say let us say this is the So, this is the equicluid or the impervious layer which distinguishes this uh, unconfined aquifer which is at the top and the confined aquifer. So, this is the unconfined aquifer and this is the confined aquifer and in this case So, the so this is the original water table or piezometric surface original uh, piezometric surface denoted by this letter W T and then uh, so here with this uh, full uh, had the well been fully penetrating and maybe let me show it here. So, this is uh, and uh, say this is the the original piezometric surface. So, this is also the same original piezometric surface let me abbreviate this as OPS and uh, here this is the original piezometric surface and this is a fully penetrating well this is the partially penetrating well and in this case this is a and uh, here we have so this is a fully penetrating well.
in a confined aquifer and uh, obviously so this is the the center line of the well partially penetrating well this is the center line of the fully penetrating well and uh, so these are the so this is the both are uh, discharging wells and in this case so what will happen is in case of a full for full penetration so the drawdown curve will be somewhat like this whereas for the same uh, this one the drawdown curve for partially penetrating well in the same confined aquifer I am sorry so I am sorry I am sorry I used the wrong color uh, this one so whereas in case of this uh, partially penetrating well the this one the drawdown in this case if we denote this drawdown by the letter sp representing the drawdown for uh, partially penetrating well and whereas in this case so the drawdown for uh, fully penetrating well in this case we can write down the relationship that is sp that is the drawdown is uh, greater than s and uh, so in the in case of this one so the uh, the streamlines will be like this whereas in case of fully penetrating well so obviously the the streamlines are almost horizontal and radially inwards like this so in case of a partially penetrating well so the drawdown so this is a higher drawdown and as compared to a fully penetrating well okay so this is a drawdown slightly lower so this is the higher drawdown for partially penetrating well and drawdown slightly lower so this is for fully penetrating well okay and here uh, so like this so the area of uh, the circle of influence they all may be more or less the same but only thing is in case of partially penetrating well so the drawdown will be more for the simple reason that the area uh, which is uh, absorbed which is drawing water is uh, more because uh, this uh, area which draws water is the, the not only the uh, cylindrical uh, curved surface but also the bottom surface of the well which in most of the cases is horizontal so therefore since the area is more so then obviously the amount of uh, water extract is also more and then so therefore the drawdown in case of partially penetrating well is uh, more 
So, with this we will uh, this will complete the second topic of uh, today's lecture and today we will go to and then uh, this uh, next we will go to the third topic which is on horizontal wells and collector wells. And uh, here, so these uh, horizontal wells play a very major role in uh, especially in providing the, the large amount of uh, ground water that is required uh, generally in case of uh, see municipal water supply schemes. So, here so for the simple reason that the horizontal wells, so they are uh, basically there the uh, flow into the well is along the axis of the horizontal well whereas in case of this vertical penetrating wells the flow is perpendicular to the well axis, the ground water flow is perpendicular to the well axis whereas in case of horizontal uh, of uh, this one and the horizontal wells. So, the the actual flow is perpendicular to the horizontal well axis, but the combined flow is along the uh, the horizontal uh, well axis. So, here so therefore, they play a very vital role in uh, providing the adequate ground water supply. So, here uh, horizontal wells play a vital role in uh, providing the required large volume of uh, ground water especially in case of municipal water supply schemes. So, here this and then of course, there is infiltration galleries are uh, type of uh, this one. So, this is uh, infiltration galleries. also some form of horizontal wells. And uh, in this case suppose this is the the horizontal well and then followed by so in this case there is a water table so here uh, this is the this is the water table and here this is the aquifer And uh, here we will uh, show this is the impervious layer so this is the impervious layer
So, this is the, the aquifer is uh, here. So, here also this is aquifer. And then this is the horizontal well. So, this is the and uh, here this is the seepage area or say which is also generally referred to as simply seep area and this is the water table and uh, here we can say so this is the the break line I am showing here. So, this is uh, one uh, this one wherein the formation of these uh, uh, the ground water layers is almost in the horizontal direction. So, uh, it can also be in the uh, whereas this ground water this uh, rocky formations geological formations may be mostly in the vertical direction also in such case. So, the horizontal well will be somewhat different. In this case, let us say this is a say this is an impervious layer. And here say this is the and then the here this is the aquifer and uh, here let us say this is the water table. So, in this case the general formation of the geological formation direction is in the vertical uh, this one. So, again here also we can show a horizontal well which will be So, this is horizontal well. So, this is a horizontal well in uh, an area with almost horizontal geological formations. Similarly, this is a horizontal well so this is a, yeah this is the horizontal well in an area having almost vertical geological formations or geo layers. So, so this horizontal wells as you can see, so depending upon the uh, in this case obviously the, uh, the area that is a seep area is much more and uh, so therefore, because the gradient in this case is uh, quite uh, less as compared to uh, vertical wells. So, therefore, the, the Darcy's law will be more applicable and then obviously, that is the reason why the, the output uh, by these horizontal wells is much more than uh, a regular uh, vertical well. And uh, let me also bring it to the notice of uh, what are known as the collector wells. So, this collector wells 
is a well which consists of a number of uh, radially uh, symmetrical horizontal wells which join a well which is uh, generally for rails one. So, now let us consider the collector well in this case so this is suppose this is the the top view Here, this is the of course, here if you want to can there can be a brake line. So, this is the pumping unit. So, through which the water is pumped. So, this is the sectional view, sectional front view, and uh, so these are. So, that is uh, horizontal wells horizontal well components of a collector well. So, this is the sectional front view and then the same thing let us uh, draw the the top view. So, in the top view so it will be So, here this will be So, all this uh, they are uh, readily emanating so here you can show the the axis So, there can be any number of uh, this radial horizontal well horizontal wells which together constitute what is known as a collector well. So, in this case
So, this is the top view of this uh, collector well and uh, so here so this is uh, and this is horizontal well components which are uh, generally so this is uh, they are referred to as uh, screen pipes and so together so it will form a collective well so this is uh, here this is the so this is the clear water well okay and obviously so this is the clear water well and uh, so this is a collector well which is may which is basically a combination of a number of uh, horizontal wells generally located at the same level and, uh, and so here uh, you can say this is a so this is a section so this is a sectional top view of a collector well. So, these uh, so here uh, they play a very vital role in uh, ensuring adequate groundwater supply generally in uh, municipal water supply schemes so now we will go to so this completes the third uh, topic and the last topic of today's lecture is uh, on uh, multiple well systems as the name itself says so there are a uh, number of uh, wells which are involved in this uh, multiple well system and uh, here so so this is a multiple well system as the name itself it is self explanatory so there are a number of uh, this wells which consist this uh, multiple well system and uh, here so this is a uh, Now let us consider, so this is a, here you can write down, so when uh, cones of depression in nearby pumping well, pumping wells overlap. with one another they constitute a multiple well system so basically a multiple well system has nearby wells and then so these wells uh, each one of them will have a cone of influence uh, cone of depression and then these cone of depressions of these nearby wells 
so they will overlap with one another so let us uh, show with uh, this one that is a, a multiple well system with say three wells wherein the uh, cone of depression uh, cone of depressions of each of these wells is uh, overlapping okay. this case say let us say this is the suppose these are the three wells and uh, let us consider that these this is the common bottom impervious layer and each of these wells are uh, discharging wells so this is q1 this is q2 and then this is say q3 and uh, each of them let us say the suppose this is the cone of depression for uh, this well and uh, so there will be another cone of depression for the other and then similarly the the third cone of depression for the so a resultant cone of depression will be something like this so this is the resultant that is composite drawdown curve curve for all three wells so this is these are the individual uh, drawdown curves for each of the wells and then so this is the resultant so like this so this multiple well systems as we have will uh, stop at this uh, and uh, in the next lecture we will uh, discuss the further topics thank you